Hi there, this is Sam, as always, and before I get started with episode 43, I just want to say a few words. It's obviously been quite a long time since the last podcast, and quite a few of you email me saying, is there going to be another podcast? Is the podcast dead? Etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, truth is, my last few months have been a bit turbulent and emotional. I broke up with my girlfriend and there have been some ups and downs and recording the podcast wasn't really at the forefront of my mind, although I was still getting emails from people and I did read them and cared about them. And But all that aside, I'm back, I'm feeling a lot happier <laughs> and settled and I'm going to record more episodes, end of story. So having said that, Thank you so much for emailing me in these past few months. A lot of people were extremely kind in the, their words. And the long and the short of it is, I'm going to keep making podcast episodes as long as there are words <laughs> left, you know. <laughs> so, okay, without further ado, let's review the words from episode 42, if you can remember them. So here's a good test, <laughs> if I remember them. They were indolent indolent. That means wanting to avoid activity or exertion, physical exertion, means to be lazy. Transgression. Transgression. That means an act that goes against some law or rule. Facetious. Facetious. That means treating a serious issue with inappropriate humor. And juncture, juncture, that means at a particular point in time, or a particular point in a series of events. Now, it's time for some new words. Finally, some new words. <laughs> Our first word, episode 43 of the Victor Prep Vocab Podcast is tenuous. That's spelled T-E-N-U-O-U-S, tenuous. It's an adjective, and it means very weak or slight. Now, tenuous is often used when describing a link between two things. So, as an example, if there was some crime committed, and there was some minor evidence that implicated John, you might say there was a tenuous link between John and this crime. It's tenuous because it's a weak link, or a slight link. Or, if you imagine you're crossing one of those rickety-looking rope bridges that you see in Indiana Jones movies in over a canyon, something like that, and you see the ropes are thin and don't look particularly strong, you could say the ropes on that bridge looked tenuous. And I would argue you probably don't want to walk on a rope bridge where the ropes look tenuous. Some synonyms are slight, insubstantial, meager, flimsy, weak, suspect, and doubtful. Our second word is disingenuous. Disingenuous. That's spelled D-I-S, dis, I-N-G, E-N-U-O-U-S. Disingenuous. Now, to be disingenuous, it's an adjective, means you are not being sincere. So that usually means pretending that you know less about something than you really do know. So if you're speaking to someone about something bad that happened, and they seem a little bit evasive, you might think they're hiding something, and they give an explanation or a description which you don't think is quite right, you might say they're being disingenuous. Now, disingenuous should be a really easy word to remember if you remember the word ingenuous. And dis just makes that the opposite. So ingenuous means innocent or naive, simple, childlike. So when we say disingenuous and remembering that Dis in front of, a, of another word usually reverses the meaning of the word. So disingenuous means the opposite of ingenuous. So not innocent, 
not simple, someone who knows more than they're letting on. Some synonyms are insincere, dishonest, untruthful, deceitful, lying, mendacious, and hypocritical. So maybe think of a time when someone's been asking you about, well, what happened? And you're giving them a disingenuous answer. Of course, everyone does that sort of thing from time to time. Our third word is contrite. Contrite. That's spelled C-O-N-C-O-N-T-R-I-T-E. Trite. Contrite. Contrite means feeling remorse or penitence or when you're affected by guilt. It can also mean simply sad, sorrowful. Some synonyms of contrite are remorseful, repentant, penitent, regretful, sorry, apologetic, or ashamed. Now, contrite, while there are many subtleties to its meanings, it usually implies that you did something wrong and then you're later feeling sad or sorry about it. So, you did something wrong, maybe you had a fight with someone, and you go home and you think about it, and you think, oh no, you know, what did I do wrong? You know, I said a terrible thing, and then you're sad about it. And then you want to go and speak to that person and say, look, I'm sorry, that was a dumb thing I said. You're feeling contrite in that moment. Our fourth and final word is inter. Inter. That's spelt I-N-T-E-R. And note, the pronunciation is inter, not inter, but inter. Now, inter has a very specific meaning. It basically means placing a dead body or a corpse in a grave or tomb. And usually that implies there was a funeral. So you could say the famous soldier was interred with military honors. Note there are basically no synonyms for this because it's such a specific word. It just means that one thing, to inter, a verb, to place a corpse in a grave or a tomb. Now let's quickly review today's words. Those were tenuous, tenuous, that means very weak, slight, flimsy, or insubstantial. Disingenuous, disingenuous, that means not being sincere, pretending you know less about something than you really do. Contrite, that means feeling remorse or feeling guilty. And inter, inter, that means to place a body or a corpse in a grave or tomb, usually as part of a funeral ceremony. Now to test you on those words, let's go through our example sentences. I'll give four example sentences and you just work out which word I'm referring to. My younger brother was blushing as he swore that he didn't have anything to do with my favorite toy being smashed to bits. The girl sobbed as her boyfriend packed his things and left. She knew it was all her fault he was leaving, and she wished she could make amends. The pharaoh was buried in a tomb under a pyramid, together with his cat. I was going to begin climbing up the cliff, when I realized the rope was extremely frayed, and didn't look like it would hold my weight at all. So guys, those are our words for episode 43. This episode has been a long time coming, I know that. And, yeah, it is what it is. Um, Any comments, send them to me at sam.fold at gmail.com. There are more episodes planned, and I promise that there are more coming. I've planned 44, 45, 46, 47 out, etc. So, yes, nothing more will be said about the very big gap of many months between episodes 42 and 43. It's our secret. It didn't happen. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.